If you enjoy the content, don't forget, like, subscribe and click the notification bell. Welcome to another episode of Devon Gunsmith Diaries. These are Purdy Barrels made by Johnson of London. New barrels made by Johnson's of London. And what my customer with the Purdy's has asked me to do is to open up the chokes to allow for standard steel. Uh, that then opens up a whole can of worms and we've got to get technical really quickly. But I thought I'd just show you the this modern style double leg of mutton case. It's quite pretty. Marked one and two. Thick sheepskin, really hard to extract the barrels. And uh, obviously there's barrel one and two. So let's get into it, guys. This is more of an informational video. This is definitely not one of your kitchen cottage gunsmithing videos, really. Um, it's not something I would be looking to suggest anybody was to get into, as you could end up with some scrap barrels very quickly. However, let's take the box away. I will cover it, cover it fairly thoroughly in an attempt to give you an understanding of what's required and some of the pitfalls involved. So most of you are familiar with the Bisley choke gauge. Um, they're absolutely fine and I use them a lot for just occasional checking. But when we're getting into something that's basically 5 thou difference, it gets a little bit hairy quite quickly and you really gotta, gotta really be on the ball. So while I can use this as a demonstrator, it shows that that's half and that's quarter, which I do agree with. These are nominal sizes. So that's quarter and half. They're a guide only, but when it comes down to using them for reaming, I wouldn't recommend it because they're vastly out of dimension. Okay, so I've got a choke which will show you somewhat what's going on inside the barrel. So with a dial bore gauge push it down to the far end and it's actually off on my gauge because I've just calibrated this gauge to the Purdy's and I'll explain why there's a difference. Um, you have to relate the choke sizes which are in increments of 5,000 per step to the bore of the gun in question. So that's where these go a bit wrong because they're generic. <clears throat> so a 12 bore would typically be um, 729 thou or 18.5 millimeters. This is gonna give you the rough idea what happens. Not accurately, but nonetheless, it does give you an idea. This is calibrated. This this bore gauge is actually calibrated in millimetres. So I have prepared some slides to go along with this presentation so that you can understand the science bit. Um, so that's what happens at the far end here it is about a bore, roughly. I'll just pop it back in. There you go. And it's um, it's a small amount out. I don't just check the diet camera. Right. OK. Let's bring it up. Because it's not my reference, I've set I've referenced this already, calibrated this to the barrels of the 
purdies. So, but if you look how it works, the choke, as it goes up in, in tightness, the dial then gives me a deflection and gives me the reading 0.2 millimetres on this occasion. So that's how it works. Put that away swiftly. Moving on quickly to the real deal. And we pop that in there. And as you can see, quite clearly, it's calibrated. So zero is the bore. And I know these to be 18.5. And when we come up through, we're just coming into the, the forcing cone of the choke and the dial comes around. And it's at about 20, uh, not 20 microns. I keep wanting to say thou, but it's not a thou gauge. 0 0.2 millimetres, which will actually equate when I flash over to the slide to quarter and again in here it calibrates nicely to zero and this should be indeed half which should be about 0.5 millimeters there you go wavering around because my hand's not steady but it's basically 0.5 so that's half and quarter and I can assure you that barrel number two is the same. So that there is the basics of gauging. And it doesn't actually matter whether the scale on the gauge is metric or imperial. They translate. And I'll be flashing up information. And I'll do a little bit of voice on the B-roll with the slides to explain that shortly. So just going to cover some choke principles. These four images show clearly cylinder, improved, modified and full. You need to note that these are constrictions exaggerated for visibility. They're not this different. But what they do clearly show you that you have a forcing cone going into the choked bore. So any of those will show you the incremental distancing. Uh, remembering that in reality, it's only five thou steps. So I apologize in advance because clearly this chart is loaded with info. <laughs> if we look at the UK choke designation of half choke and then go across two millimeters, you will see 0.508 is the exact measurement for half choke relative to the bore of the gun. And if you look at quarter, you'll see that 0.254 millimetres is the exact measurement for quarter choke relative to the bore of the gun. There are a lot of other things that you can see there, effective range and stuff like that. And the comparisons between the different chokes showing UK nomenclature and USA nomenclature which is fairly common across the board now so I tend to quote both because it's simpler but I favour the UK being a UK citizen and all that chaps so using my visual aid of a, of a multi choke removable choke that is approximately bore or cylinder and it thickens it starts off very thin and it thickens up by way of a ramp in there, which I can probably show you with the bore gauge. We start there. It's a nadger's off, but it, it steadily increases until it flattens out. Right, so we're about 20 mil in. We're approaching the muzzle now, about 10 mil. It will flatten out. So, again, there'll be a little diagram in a second showing how the taper or the cone of the choke works.
Another way I can help you visualize it is you can see that the full choke is narrower, or possibly you can, it's stepped. Full choke is narrower than cylinder. And uh, I think it's about 40 or 50 thou in steps. Again, the charts and the science bit will cover that. At present, though, I am in a bit of a quandary because my customer um, is undecided as to what sizes he wants to go to. And the problem is because he's transitioning to standard steel, which is fine with nitro. Again, I've got some more cards to show you on that one. The um, proofing marks is what we need to go to next. I'll try and zoom this in here. You can see there's a pretty 18.5, which is the bore reading or cylinder. And I'll try and zoom in there. Oh, what a nice nitro proof, London nitro proof. And it says, 850 bar, 70 millimetres, 12 bore. Beautifully done. And interestingly, the uh, serial numbers matched on here to the other pair of barrels and the actions. Just to show I'm not cheating. On the other barrel, 18.5, nitro proofed, 12 bore, 70 millimetres, 850 bar. Zoom out. I'll refer to the charts with more information there. And so we're now going to talk about proof marks and steel shot suitability. The industry has worked hard to produce a standard steel cartridge for nitro proof barrels. There are some details that you need to focus on. You need to check your proof marks on your barrels and see if they've got a London proof mark, nitro proof, or a Birmingham nitro proof. You see the chart on the right shows there are quite a few iterations through the ages, depending on what year your proof mark was stamped. And if you're lucky enough to have a fleur de lis or it's stamped steel shot, you can use high performance steel cartridges in your gun. And Still a warning though, with the nitro proof and choking, you still need to make sure you have the correct chokes, which we'll go into in more detail. At this point, I am now waiting for the customer to come back to me because the way it is, half choke for lead, which is this measurement, uh, that measurement there, half choke, uh, will, with standard steel, because they're cupped with the plastic wad and they're not very uh, compressible, they're not malleable like lead is, um, half choke is the only choke you can use, or half choke up to cylinder, should I say, that's the minimum, the tightest you can go with standard steel in a nitro proof gun. The reasons being are the steel is not as malleable as lead. So when it gets pushed through the forcing cone through the choke, it's not going to give as much. So you could get a split barrel. Alternatively, it's because there's a cup which holds the lead in a plastic wad, which is to prevent scoring of your barrels because of the hard and the harder steel um, or the iron core material that's being used um, is not as forgiving as lead or bismuth is. So they're cupped to protect your steel barrels, which is good. I don't mind that. But what it does is it creates a constriction of itself so effectively you're turning a half choke into a full choke. 
in terms of the way that it patterns on a plate or the shot cone that is left leaves the barrel. So the numbers don't stack up in terms of lead. And guess what, guys? I've got another chart for this. OK, and we move on now to the actual choke patterns that are typical for lead shot. And this is expressed as a percentage of lead shot as a pattern inside a 30 inch circle at any given range. Now you see that, uh, for example, half modified provides 60% of the lead pattern at 40 yards inside a 30 inch circle. When we compare that with the cupped wad of standard steel, that would become typically like full. So on to the shot string diagram and uh, another visual aid trying to show you how the concentration of the shot is influenced by the choke and thus the thing called the pattern of shot is tightened by the choke. I'll show you a diagram of what pattern means against a pattern plate and some comparisons of uh, choke effect. So you'll see that from the lead chart it's quite clear and in a minute I'm going to show you the steel theoretical uh, extrapolation in that we will use half choke which so these barrels incidentally could be fired with standard steel right now as they are because they're half and quarter so there's half there's quarter they will be a tight pattern though so at 30 yards you're going to be pillowcasing birds and um, that's the that's just the facts. So what we're exploring to get together, my customer and I, are the, is the discussion. I'm using this as a visual aid. So cylinder is here, improved is here, quarter is there. I'm suggesting perhaps we explore taking half to quarter and the quarter to improved. I use the English terminology and in the charts you'll see the American equivalents. So half to quarter and quarter to improved, which gives you a little bit more scope because unfortunately my customer is undecided as to when he's going to make the transition over to 100% steel. And he's like, oh, what if I use bismuth? What if I use lead? What will the patterns be like? And it is a, it's a genuine question. So I'm not rolling my eyes at this point. I know his pain. And these are things that have been enforced upon us, not by choice. So he's wanting to get his beloved Purdy to continue to fire. And with these new barrels, when I say new, they're newer. They've been used a bit. Half and a quarter will work. But obviously... Uh, quarter and improved would work better. A quarter and improved would be an improvement and not so far away from shooting with steel versus lead, but they both be a compromise, if that makes sense. So any close birds closer than 30 yards are going to stand the risk of getting pillowcased with steel. But if you're lucky to have still have some lead and we're still in the transition period because it's approaching, um, then you can actually consider using lead until you've used up your lead. So he's looking for a compromise between the two. You know, we have to, we have got a compromise at some point and we're just mulling over those differences. And now we go on to the theoretical choke patterns for steel shot. This, of course, is based on a percentage of shot pattern inside a 30 inch circle at any given range. And it's based on research that has shown standard steel will pattern through a half or modified choke as if it was patterning from a full choke. So these modified theoretical figures you see here 
give you an idea of what you might have to use as a say multi choke or have your gun reamed to achieve a similar result with steel as you would have done with lead previously so you may have to start thinking in terms of cylinder improved cylinder quarter to get close to what you were achieving using a nitro ball gun with lead clearly the pattern is affected by the wadding cup that protects your barrels from the abrasive effects of the steel shot so with these images here you can see cylinder and full choke comparisons over given distances the pattern plates are typically the circle is typically 30 inches and the outer part of the circle is 4 feet uh, that's the size of the shot pattern and then obviously they've just shot at different distances at the same pattern target or pattern plate as it's commonly called to get um, different results so with standard steel shooting through a half choke you get the pattern like the lower part of the picture of full choking effect because of the shot being cupped in or cupping wad to protect the barrels so that's why it's important to understand what pattern is and how chokes affect them okay so we're about ready to start reaming and here's the reamer and obviously need to add lubrication this has got to be done quite a few times and obviously there will be some adjustment of the reamer as well must be hand turned if you turn it with the machine you get chatter and you can't detect it quick enough this is simply very simply oh i'm just starting to cut now and at this point add more lubricant so it's a cutting oil we're using and first pass just to clean up and open up obviously venting quite easily and it is cutting too a little bit a small amount of swarf there so first adjustment using adjustable reamers obviously you can index infinitesimally small amounts in this manner ah, there you go so that's the next index now that should just start to get a little bit tighter as we enter into the choke. Yeah, it's still not fully engaged yet. I always like to enter and begin the reaming process really quite gently. Once you get cutting, it doesn't take long. Uh, and it's always better to take your time and get the job done nicely with a minimum amount of need for polishing afterwards and that's the beauty of hand reaming these obviously fl fl have straight these obviously have straight float flutes you can get spiral flutes but of course not in the adjustable sense so that's why you need to do it by hand. Right now, this is tighter now. Still not too bad. Just feeling my way in. Now, you think you would say, why don't you just simply measure it? Well, it's not that simple. And when you do measure it, it frequently starts off too tight. So back to the adjustment again
just starting to open, just starting to enter the cutting phase here. These are very slightly, yeah, I can feel it now. There we go, first, first little chatter there. Just very gently, more of this in between slides. Right, so we're, that's three thou removed. Can't see it, sorry guys. That's three thou removed, so it's only a small amount at any given time. And I've got to do it on four barrels. <laughs> it is what it is. <coughs> that's how I make my money. Off camera, I just happen to be adjusting the adjustable reamer once again. Yeah, so only a small amount at a time. Patience is a virtue.
that, that nice sound. Just start to catch again. Nearly on the breakthrough at the rear, it always seems to try to catch because it's there.
and I'm through. <clears throat> Always a bit of chatter at the end of the bite. And it's because it gets slack and starts to flop about a bit. Yeah, that's good. We get in there. It'll get worse before it gets better, that's for sure. Right, so. Keep on going. So at this point, if you were measuring with a Bisley choke, that would now read quarter. So that would be quarter and quarter now. But using a more accurate dial ball gauge, it's still actually got another five thou to go yet. So continue. And we've got to do it this four times. So this is only the first time, and then we've got to polish them as well. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that's a good cut. Now you can see a good cut. <clears throat> uh, quick, there'll be swarf and whatnot in here, but now we're getting to it. That's approaching the right size now. I'm only halfway through, but it's we're at the right size again. This is full of bits, but if I now operate offer offer this up, and it's just starting to touch on improved cylinder. So we've gone from half to quarter, and now we're just touching on improved cylinder, which will be the new choke size for that one. This one's still at still at quarter. So this will go to cylinder. Cylinder and improved is the plan. And we're through. It's important to go all the way through the choke, otherwise you end up with a sort of weird taper thing going on. It's tight, but it's good. You don't want it loose, do you? Yeah, there was less cleaning up on that. And I think that one, yeah. Yeah. That's good. So if you're wondering what you should be doing with your nitro-proofed multi-choke or fixed choke shotgun, and should you be using standard steel with it, or do you need to buy a new steel-proof gun, Let's look at some of these pros and cons of shooting with steel shot. One of the pros of a nitro proofed multi choke shotgun means that you can shoot standard steel through chokes from half, which is modified, up to cylinder. And another pro is if you have a nitro proofed fixed choked shotgun, it can be reamed by a gunsmith to shoot standard steel. And you may have heard me say more than once that standard steel shoots tighter patterns than lead. So you might need to think 
if you want to use to shoot tungsten or bismuth loads because chokes will need to be more open compared to those for shooting lead when you're using standard steel. And an unfortunate con, if you have Damascus barrels in your gun, you should not ste shoot steel through them. Anybody notice my epic fail by any chance? That is now quarter from half, half to quarter. And this is quarter going to improve cylinder, which we know as skeet. So that was my epic fail. I used the wrong wording. Right, that's the first easy pass just to get the cutter going. It's not completely cutting. It's just lightly reaming. That's to make sure it doesn't chatter when I go through again when I adjust it. And there won't be too much in the way of cutting going on there. Now. Well, that just looked like it went a bit too easily, I suspect. The adjustments need adjusting once again. But what I'll check. It's gone in easily. I did put loads of lube on that. And that's not a full cut. Okay, so... No, I don't think that's quite right somehow. Oops. Yeah. 
Oh, George, I think he's got it. So, another barrel to go, but it's the same. I'm not going to record that all over again. Point one two improved cylinder. Point two five quarter. So if you're in a gunsmith workshop, you would probably use carborundum powder and do a bit of lapping. I'll show you another method that is quite useful, which is using Merclon cloth or scotch Bright, similar to. And if you pop it on a jag, you can, with the right amount, polish that further. See if I can get a little bit of illumination on that for you. At the moment, they're a little bit. They're a little bit scory sort of thing, uh, but we'll polish that out. And um, then number two barrel. Then obviously you see where there's a bit of wear here on the bluing. I will touch those bits up off off camera. I know a lot of you guys don't realise that when you're working and talking to the camera, you do forget to do sequences. I had a guy drop me a message saying, don't you lubricate things? I'm like, well, of course I do, but quite often I forget to do it on the, in the sequence in the, in the in shot because I'm thinking about the other processes. You've got to remember I'm cameraman, director, script writer, operator, gunsmith, chief bottle washer um so sometimes i'm afraid not being perfect i know you think i am but i'm not um <clears throat> he doesn't always get to camera but also disclaimer this is entertainment it's not for an instruction video because that wouldn't suit the algorithm would it come on guys okay so some of you are going to start wincing now but Merklon on the on a cleaning rod will work quite nicely like that. Once you've set it up, put a drop of oil in. It doesn't matter if it runs out. And at this point, I would probably put it on a on a hand recorder's drill. Now. Obviously, those in the know would know you'd have phosphor bronze br bushes, ideally. But I'm just going to show you how you can. Polish it. I'll see if I can do a, that one's a before and that's an after. You can also use this to descour when you've got a lot of fouling in. But I would always use a wooden rod, obviously. See if I can show you that with a little bit of extra torch light. It's an improved polish there. And uh, yeah, that that will suffice. Obviously, non-ferrous, so it doesn't rub.
go. So some of you will be thinking, oh my goodness, it's rough. This is no real, really no different than doing it in a lathe. <laughs> and you will notice I was balancing it with my hand. It's not freehand, I promise you. But that is nice and clean now. And... Just to get rid of all the smoke and mirrors, there it is. Nice, clean, smooth balls. And I'm going to just check those in a minute with the bore dial again. Let's get a final reading. Oh, yes. Nice. Improved cylinder and quarter. Perfect. So if you were, you know, hypothetically doing this at home, because this is not an instructional video, I hasten to add. Wouldn't I want the liability? There's your quarter. And there's your improved. Improved cylinder, quarter. So that's what they would call skeet in America. And modified. Okay. Number two to go. I won't do that now. And like I say, there will be some dressing up. You can dress this up on the front if you wanted to. Blew off these bits with a bit of cold blue. Pick out that. Tidy it up. But you will now be able to fire uh, standard steel through this these barrels. And achieve some kind of patterning. So they would be something like the equivalent of half in lead and quarter there. Can't remember what they are. I was trying to think what they're called in Americanese. But there we go anyway. So I hope you like the video, guys. And uh, you can see a wide shot to see my messy bench. <laughs> So until the next time, thanks guys.